I'll start off by introducing uh, the other speakers on this evening's webinar. Um, we've got, uh, for those of you who were with us for our first online church webinar, uh, we have um, Sarah Newman, who's my colleague in the communications department, uh, is uh, joining us again, uh, along with Alan Moss, uh, who uh, delivered the main uh, presentation at the last um, we uh, webinar. Alan is a curate um, in East London uh, and has been working with us closely at the diocese uh, on a, our, um, developing our online church approach. Um, and we're joined by James Cottis, uh, who works, uh, who, who runs a company called Digital Spirit that works very closely with the diocese and indeed many of our um, churches across the diocese. Um, uh, building websites and supporting digital communications generally. And I'm delighted we're also joined this evening um, by Evie Ball, uh, who's a children's and youth minister um, at Meadgate Church in Chelmsford. And Evie's going to be sharing a little bit about her experiences of, uh, of video, particularly over uh, recent months. Um, just before we uh, get going, I'll run through some of the sort of uh, logistics in terms of how this evening's session will work. Um, the first thing to say, as you can see on your screen, is that we have closed captions working this evening. Uh, so if you would like subtitles on the screen, uh, there's, a there's a button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you click that and activate the subtitles, they will, they will come up. It's auto transcribing. So uh, you may well uh, see things uh, that aren't quite accurate, but hopefully uh, it will be helpful nevertheless. There's a lot of people on uh, this evening, which is great. So um, as everyone is doing so far, please, if you could remain muted and then unmute yourself if you're called in to give feedback from breakout groups or, uh, or that sort of thing, uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, we'll have a question and answer session at the end. Please put those questions into the chat box and you don't need to wait until the end uh, to ask the questions. Um, and finally, we are recording the webinar this evening uh, to put on our website. So um, you shouldn't uh, appear in the video really unless you're someone giving feedback from a, a breakout group, et cetera. Um, so, but if you don't want to be in it, just message me directly during the webinar and I'll make sure that you're edited out at the final uh, cut. The breakout groups themselves will not be uh, recorded. So they are um, they're, they're private spaces for the, for the people who are in them, uh, so to speak. Okay, let's just have a look at uh, what we will be going through uh, this evening. Uh, okay, so um, we're doing the introductions uh, and I'll go through in a minute the outcomes, um, what it is we want to actually get out of the uh, webinar, what we want you to be able to take away from it. And then we'll do a presentation um, uh, which we'll split between myself and Sarah and James and Alan, uh, where we'll basically give you six top tips uh, on effective video and live streaming. Then Evie. Um, we'll talk a little bit about her experiences at, at Meadgate, and then we'll put you into breakout groups to reflect on all of that. Uh, and you may identify questions uh, for the Q&A as well. And then we'll wrap up uh, with a uh, question and answer session at eight o'clock. Um, uh, and um, we'd hope to wrap the whole thing up before um, half past eight. In terms of uh, the outcomes from this evening, so we basically want to leave you uh, having pointed you in the right direction so that you've got a basic understanding uh, of key considerations relating to using video uh, and uh, live streaming for online worship. So we're going to go through uh, quite briefly because of the amount of time we've got, but we're going to go through equipment and the various options. We're going to do some Sarah's going to do some top tips on production, getting uh, lighting, sound, framing, all that sort of thing right. Alan's then going to talk a little bit about your different broadcast options, whether you go live, whether you do pre-recorded and the different platforms you might consider using, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Zoom, uh, etc. James will then come back in and talk a little bit about the software that's available uh, both to edit video and also for uh, live streaming. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about 
using social media, email, et cetera, to promote your online worship and try and reach beyond your existing audiences. Uh, and then Sarah will talk a little bit about the legalities um, uh, around licensing, safeguarding, um, uh, data protection, et cetera. Um, uh, I think, as I said, uh, it will. there's a lot there. So we will aim to leave you having pointed you in the right direction to find out more about some of those things rather than uh, being totally uh, comprehensive and indeed we'll send an email out afterwards with a bunch of links uh, covering these things and then the final outcome is we want everyone to have learned from each other um, particularly from Evie and her experiences but also when you talk to each other in the breakout groups uh, that you um, have learned from each other as well um, and uh, from each other's experiences okay so that is the plan uh, and we are going to start off with our um, uh, with our first uh, presentation uh, or first top tip on equipment. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to James to take us uh, through that. So uh, what I want to, to quickly just go through, um, obviously, the equipment and stuff that we you could potentially need um, to do your recordings and stuff and broadcast out to everyone. Um, the first thing I actually want to kind of get across to everyone is you don't need lots of expensive equipment. Um, you don't need to spend thousands and thousands of pounds. Um, and chances are you've probably already got some of the stuff at home already. Um, so, for example, if you have a mobile phone, for example, you can already stream out live um, to this and you can record stuff on that. So there's lots of different kind of options over at, around for you. And I'm just going to go through kind of a few different options um, very quickly. Um, of software that you probably already have um, that you can already use yourself. So for example, let me just bring up my slides. I'm just gonna share my screen. Um, no, it's fine, I can't find it, that's fine. Um, so the first thing I want to do is obviously, yeah, so the phone, obviously most people have probably got um, a mobile phone already. So all with on this, these phones actually, um, and if you've got an iPhone or an Android phone, the cameras in these are fantastic already. So you can already do a lot of streaming and stuff and recording um, yourself on this. Um, if you want to do that within church, I'd recommend having something like a tripod. And within your tripod, you can get like a holder and stuff. So this one here. So this is just a gorilla, little gorilla tripod with a um, connection for my phone. And then all I need to do is obviously just put my phone in the landscape view and tighten it up quickly. And then from that, I can then obviously position that on my desk um, or where I'm broadcasting from and then just talk into that. I'd always recommend a tripod um, because the ability, obviously you don't want to have the shaky hands and stuff. And with a tripod, it allows just to, to less control, it'll take the um, pressure away from that. And obviously can, you can just look into it. So that's, a very, very quick setup there, for example. Um, the other thing you're also gonna to want to sort of think about a little, a little bit as well is the microphones as well. So if you are gonna broadcast live to, a, to your phone, it's also worth having a tripod, uh, sorry, having a microphone um, that's connected to yourself as well. So in the simplest terms, you can get a simple Bluetooth mic uh, microphone from Amazon for around about somewhere between 15 to 40 pounds and that'll Bluetooth into the phone. And then you can obviously just start streaming from there and obviously all record your video onto your mobile phone and away you go. So that's a very, very simple way that you can obviously get off the ground now. The second option is using your webcam. So you might have a USB um, webcam that you can obviously, again, just use as a camera um, that you can obviously broadcast via that way as well. The other options you've also can do is just using like this is what we use in my church and this is just a simple webcam this is just a simple um, video camera so this is just a simple panasonic hd camera that i purchased for um for my church and this is what we broadcast um on our, on our sunday service this is what we use and this is what we use in the ordinations and stuff what we did at the cathedral as well uh, this camera cost 269 pounds um, from john lewis so again it wasn't a huge a huge sort of expense and stuff for us um, so again, this is something if you want to take it up to the next level away from a phone and you wanted something a bit more control, you can use something like this. Um, a bit later on, I'm going to go through the software that we can use. And obviously, I will actually go through setting up and show you how to kind of set up a camera and stuff so you can actually use it as well. But using something like a, a simple camcorder or something like that um, is all you will need. Um, with the camcorder, what you'll need to do is make sure it has a HDMI output. 
So most of the new cameras do, some of the older ones won't, but the newer cameras will have a HDMI output. So that's just what you need to double check because you need to take the feed from the camera and put it into your computer. And to do that, you'll also need one of these. So this is a um, HDMI video capture card as well. So what you'll need to do, what this is gonna do is it's gonna take the feed from our camera and we are gonna take the H HDMI input in and then we're gonna output it again into my laptop. And then from that, I can then go to my streaming software. So again, I'll cover that a bit later on, but that's just sort of talking through the different options and stuff. Um, capture cards, they range from 20 pounds. This one here was 70 pounds from Amazon. And this one also does audio as well. So I can actually take a feed from an audio from our AV system, which I do in church. And I take that into the software as well. So those are the kind of few elements and stuff that you need for um, running your software, et cetera. Um, and obviously a computer as well. But those, what I want to just again, just get across is you don't need thousands and thousands of pounds. You don't need to get a company to come in. And my, my first port of call would always just say, just use your mobile phone if that's what you've got or use a camcorder like that and just get your hands dirty and just try it. No one's expecting it to be a polished BBC presentation. It just needs to be zone. very simple and actually just doing that is all you need. So yeah, later on, I will go across and actually I'm going to go through setup um, and we'll actually be using a bit of software and I will show you a live stream as well. Back to Tom. Thank you, James. Uh, so we're going to go over to, uh, we're going to go over to Sarah now. And I will just uh, bring up Sarah's slides on production. Hello, everybody. Um, as Tom mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about some production tips and just basically some tips to get the best out of your videos. So the first one there, as you can see, is to plan. It's always best to plan. And the main thing about planning is kind of thinking about your audience and um, thinking about your audience will enable you to shape your content and think about um, everything from your setup that you use, from your language um, to your language and your presenting style. A, vi a video for your vi youth group, for example, will be very different for a video from your to your regular Sunday worshippers. Um, next slide, please, Tom. Okay, the next um, big tip is on lighting. Lighting is a key to a good video. And as you can see there on the slide, there are some do's and don'ts and how to make lighting work for you. So I'll quickly run through those. So don't film with your back towards the window because the lighting on that will be terrible. <laughs> and I suppose if many of you have taken photos or done that, you know what I mean. Um, always, um, Remember to not look if you're outside filming directly into the sun because you'll get squinty eye face, <laughs> which wouldn't be very pleasant for your viewers. And also um, do not light yourself from underneath because that's not very um, flattering either. Um, so moving away from the don'ts, moving towards the do's. Um, it's good to always film in natural daylight, um, making sure that um, the lights kind of lighting up your face. Um, it's always good to film also outdoors. Um, cloudy or shady areas are best for this. And if you're filming at night, um, maybe in your study or doing evening um, worship, always make sure you light up the room as much as possible. Um, next slide, please, Tom. Okay, um, now we're going to move on to framing. It's good to spend some time thinking about framing and the positioning of your subject on the screen. It's good to make sure you're not too far away from the screen or similarly your head's not chopped off of the frame. So just have a little bit of a play around and make sure you're happy, happy with everything in the shot. Um, if possible, keep the camera at eye level. So you're, it's like having a one-to-one -one conversation with your audience. Also, um, James touched on it earlier, but video is always better when it's shot in landscape. If you shoot video in portrait, you often get the big wide strips at the side, um, which can be um, difficult for editing and it just generally looks better in landscape. Um, also, we need to think about the background that you're shooting your video against. You need to make sure that this complements the style of your video. 
Um, filming in your living room maybe create a more intimate, friendly and informal atmosphere, but you could um, choose to film in your study. Um, one of the top tips for that is um, check out what's on the, your shelves behind you. Um, for example, you may not want people to see things like your fa family photographs and other bits and bobs. Um, wherever you decide to film, it's important to make the background um, as least cluttered as possible and you can dress your set and make the space look attractive and welcoming for your viewers. Next slide. Um, no, not next slide, sorry, Tom. We're going on to sound. Um, it's always best to use a microphone when filming your videos. As James also mentioned earlier, these are easily available and they don't have to be expensive. Um, it's also good practice to add subtitles to your video before posting them online. Um, this is to ensure that your video is accessible to all of your audience. Um, and the last one there is just to try and speak as slowly and as clearly as possible and use language that's clear and suitable for your audience. Okay, next one, please, Tom. Okay, this is a slide about um, beginnings and endings. Um, it's really important to make smooth beginnings and endings to your videos. If, if you're going live, um, remember that people can see you whilst you're waiting for others to join, um, join the live stream. So you can use this time to say hello to people, be welcoming to newcomers, and just generally welcoming your audience. Um, if you're pre-recording a video, it's always a good idea to leave a few seconds pause at the beginning and at the end of your video for editing. Um, for example, the lunge at the end of for the stop recording button at the end can easily be cut off in the edit if you leave a few seconds either side. Um, and basically, I um, just wanted to say, have fun with recording videos, be creative. If you try something that doesn't work, or your setup isn't quite right, you can just um, have a play around with the lighting, have a play around with what setup best works for you and just have, try again. If you try something that doesn't work, it doesn't matter. And another useful tip is to shoot your video, if you're doing a pre-record, into small segments so you don't have to reshoot large parts of your videos if you make a mistake. One of the most important things to, to remember is to smile because it really lifts a video and um, just a reminder that there's some great resources on video on the Church of England website and there's also a brilliant online video on our Church Hub webpage from the Diocese of Manchester all about making videos and we can circulate links to these after the webinar. Back to Tom. Okay, uh, so it's over to Alan now. Uh, evening everyone. Um, so my task is to uh, just lay out a few uh, platforms. I'm sure you're all aware of these different platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Zoom, YouTube, you've probably got a million others that you've heard of. Um, but what I wanted to do is just briefly just lay it out these four top ones that we tend to use Instagram, Facebook, Zoom, YouTube. And I want to kind of to, to pitch it or frame it in a way which is like how we might approach inviting people into our own churches. I don't know about you, but, you know, as a youth worker for many years, I'm always trying to relate things to people. And so I thought when I'm approaching uh, different platforms, I'm like, what are they for? You know, what's the purpose of that platform? Um, they've all got similar sort of characteristics to them. You can generally live stream on a lot of them or that kind of thing, but they lend themselves to different purposes. So, for instance, there you've got Instagram. So Instagram, I see, is a little bit of a window. If someone was coming to your house, or creepy as that might sound, it's like appearing through the window. You know, it's like, what does your life look like? You, you post things on there, something about your community life. We we put uh, updates and, and those kind of things, something which just suggests something about the vibrancy and the, the, the life within your church. Instagram's all about pictures and um, short videos. And it's a great place where we can just engage with people, where people can come across us and go, wow, OK, that's what they're about. Facebook, as I'm sure many of you might already be using if you're live streaming. Um, Facebook seems to be popular. You can stream onto Facebook via Zoom and via YouTube and they all kind of interconnect. But Facebook is like that place where you invite people to explore a little bit more. If Instagram's where you come to browse, then 
Facebook I see is that place where you might engage in the life of the community a little bit more, engage in conversations and and see what's going on in the life of the church on a physical as well as digital level. So Facebook is is often where we do a bulk of our work, I'd imagine, if you're streaming live, etc. So that's like that place of invitation, like our Sunday service, if you like. And then Zoom, I always kind of think of that as a little bit like if you have midweek groups or cell groups or whatever you you pitch them as in your your communities. It's like a place where people can break down into smaller groups. It's where discipleship can happen. I know obviously it's always better in real time face to face, but Zoom can be a place where a few people can come together and really uh, connect, um, really connect with uh with one another and have those deeper conversations it's it's that kind of more intimate space and then youtube i always see that as a place this is like the the biggest video streaming uh, website um on in the world well you know it's like it's huge and it's a place where i see is we cast vision and someone i think i just saw a little question pop up there about whether you can uh can youtube connect with facebook um and i think that you can certainly uh put your videos onto youtube i guess i'll leave that to james but um but you can certainly go live on youtube and do all those things but i always see youtube as that place where we go to pitch our larger vision what are we about what are we aspiring to really kind of building people up so you know all these things are interchangeable but if you really want to go more in depth about the pros and cons of the platform i've got a little link there which we'll put in the chat and we'll send out afterwards and they break it down a lot better than I do. And it's a little bit more detailed. It's a great blog from HubSpot and it really breaks down. It was updated just a few weeks ago and it will really help you to maybe go, well, what are we trying to do? And what platforms are we best to use? And then uh, if we go on to the next one, please, Tom. And then there's been a bit of a debate. Is it better to pre-record or is it better to go live with our services? Well, uh, we obviously, it was Remembrance Sunday, this past Sunday and it's, uh, remembrance day uh tomorrow but we had this same debate in our church so i'm a priest i'm a third year curate down in in romford down in in uh in london and uh, we asked ourselves these questions so we we usually live stream our services because i love the engagement i'm a bit of a banter boy but sometimes things lend themselves better to uh pre-recording so we decided well What's the purpose of the service? It's to remember our fallen heroes. It's not just to, to stream an engaging service or give a sermon. It's about remembering those who died for us. So that was the purpose of it. The content, the where, we've got two service, two churches. One's in the middle of a big estate and one's a very picturesque wedding venue. And one has a, uh, a two memorials for World War One and World War Two, And then the other one lends itself to streaming. So we thought rather than trying to, go live and go between the two we pre-recorded the service in order to make it a lot more reflective etc and it really worked well so really it's like why are you doing it, it will determine the content that you put into it which will determine whether you pre-record or live stream um, creativity often people say that pre-recording can be a, a good canvas for more creativity you can you know paint a picture which will take you two hours and then speed it up and it will take two minutes and make an amazing point on scripture and creativity, whatever it is. But, you know, you can be creative online when you're, you're uh, live streaming as well. So again, it's like, why, what's the purpose of it? What's the content of it? And how creative do you want to be? And asking those questions helps us to engage in, in what we want to do. And then that last point there, who engagement. I've been a youth worker for so long, I'm always about engagement. And when we live stream, I always have a phone up the front with me always keeping an eye on the live stream and answering questions and engaging with people and keeping the conversation going. So it's not so much about giving loads of content, but it's very much about a two-way conversation, um, which really, I think, embraces our, our culture. So, so there we go. Pre-record, live stream, it's up to you, but ask yourself those questions. What's the purpose, the content, the creativity and the engagement? Thank you, Alan. Uh, we're going to go back to James again now, who's going to talk a little about um, editing and live streaming software. Do you want the uh, slides off, James? Uh, no, can I have the first slides just quickly? Okay. And then I will, yeah, if I can have it off okay. after that. Uh, okay, so we obviously looked at um, the different options of um, 
equipment that we need. Um, but obviously, once you've recorded it or you're going to live stream, you're going to need um, some different software and stuff to push it out there as well. So what I've done there is I've listed a few. And again, we'll put these links and stuff when we send them out to you. Um, but you've got a couple of options. Obviously, if you're using your, your mobile device, if you're using a phone, you can stream um, from Facebook Live, for example, straight away on that and you don't need any kind of software. Um, if you want to stream to YouTube, you have to have more than a thousand followers to, to stream live um, on from your phone. So for the majority of churches, that's going to be an unlikely thing to start off with. So you're going to need to push it through a bit of software, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, OBS is probably the one I'd recommend. It's one National Church recommends as well. Um, there's a few options and stuff on there uh, that National Church recommend, but OBS is one and it's free. It's open source software. Um, it's the one I use in my church and it's a demonstration I'm going to do in a second. Um, church online platform, again, that's another paid for platform, that one. But again, it allows us to use to take the stream um, from our camera device, um, push it through this software. And that's what links up to, to YouTube to stream out to, to everywhere. Um, so those are a couple of different options for actually um, for streaming live. If you want to record it, um, so you've recorded your, your video, um, whether on your webcam, on your camera or your phone, for example, you might want to edit it. So you might want to put the church logo maybe at the beginning and then have the logo at the end and then put some kind of text and stuff over it as well. So there's a couple of pieces of software that you can use and um, depending on what device you've got, if you've got an Apple Mac, um, iMovie comes with built into, um, into Macs. So you can use that for free. It's a very simple system. Again, it's just trying to drag and drop. So you can drop your movie in. You can you can select the area you want to remove, for example. So if you have done that lunge to turn the video on and off, like Sarah mentioned, you can kind of get that bit and you can kind of just edit that, edit those sections out, for example. You can also, it does a fantastic job at cleaning up audio as well. You can literally click a button and it just cleans up the audio really, really well. Um, and obviously you can put some simple transitions in there as well. Maybe some fade from kind of a, a fade up, for example, if you want to fade from your logo to your, to your video and stuff. And it does it all very, very simply and you can output that for you. Shotcut is a PC version. Again, that's free version stuff. And I know that the communications team have got a version of that and they've been using that a few times. And again, that's a very simple PC bit of software. Again, you can just download from the website and um, follow along from there. There's lots of tutorials and stuff on any of these as well. And if you're not sure on anything, my first point of call would always be just to Google it. You, there'll be YouTube videos of someone doing all of this and they'll walk you through it a lot in a little bit more time than we've got here. Um, if you have got a bit of money, then you can look at things like Adobe Premiere. So that is um, a very um, great bit of software. It's used by professionals, et cetera to do um, video editing. So it does the same as iMovie, for example, but you could do a little bit more. So you can have a bit more of a polished look, for example, if you wanted to use something like that. Um, Adobe Rush is, uh, Premiere Rush is a, is a little bit of software again, that's predominantly used on your mobile device. So again, what you can then do from that is you can, you can use that software to edit videos on your mobile phone, and then you can save it and upload it to Instagram, YouTube, etc. The last one, um, Audacity, is basically some software for if you wanted to record a podcast. So we've obviously concentrated a lot on um, live broadcasting and video, etc. But there's also the podcast as well. It's something we shouldn't forget about. And actually, there's a lot of churches also using podcasts as well. And this is, again, this is a bit of software that you can record your podcast. You can go in, you can edit it, and then you can upload it to something like SoundCloud, for example, or even YouTube, but you can upload it to SoundCloud, SoundCloud and put it on the internet in there. So Tom, if you can stop your screen. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to try and do, hopefully, if this works, is I'm going to try and show you a setup um, to, to broadcast with OBS. He says, hopefully, <laughs> this is where it's all going to go wrong. So what I'm going to do is share going to minimize those. Let's close that chat down. And then I'm going to share my screen. So hopefully you can see my screen now. So what I'm going to do is kind of go through showing you how to um, how to edit and set up. Let's just get rid of that. Um, how to set up 
um, using OBS um, software, which is what you can see now in front of you. Um, so this is a, the free bit of software and I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a video from YouTube and then I'm going to go through, connect my um, the camera I've got behind me and we're hopefully, if it works, we'll be able to do live streaming and stuff and I'm going to show you how to do that. So using YouTube, um, this is my church's YouTube channel. Um, one thing to, to, rem to rem remember is that if you're going to go live with YouTube, you need to give it 24 hours notice to broadcast live. So what you'll need to do is when you come in here, you click on create and you can go live and it'll ask you, it'll say it'll need 24 hours notice and stuff to do that. So don't do it first thing on a Sunday morning if you need to broadcast that live, do it at the weekend, do it Friday, Saturday to give yourself some time. So what you need to do is obviously go to schedule a stream. So if I just go back a sec, so I'll go back here. So if I'm about to go live, what I want to do is I always need to schedule my stream. So if I click on create and click on go live, this will bring up my scheduling software here. So I've got no upcoming streams at the moment. So what I need to do is I can click schedule stream. So if I click on that, so it's got some demo and stuff like I want to do. I want to create a new one. But what it will do is it will bring up the previous version as well. So you can actually use the settings from that as well. Uh, right, so I was going to give this a quick title, so I'm just going to call it test stream. So this you might call, so we tend to call it our, um, the name of the church, the name of the talk for the Sunday, for example, and then put the date, etc. afterwards. So you can, I'll leave it as test stream for now. Um, you obviously want it to be public. Um, so this, you've got a couple of options. You've got public, unlisted and private. Um, I'm going to make this um, an unlisted one just because I don't really want to get that live on our YouTube, but I will be, hopefully be able to show you working. Uh, but obviously you want to leave yours private. One thing I will just say as well is I do two, two streams and stuff on the Sunday morning. So I set up the stream ready to go live at 10 o'clock. And I also do a test stream, which is around about half past nine. So what I can do with that test stream is I can use that one first of all, I can play around with it and make sure my sound audio and everything's working at the church. And then obviously just go live, but I go live on a private video only I can see on my iPad check everything's working and then once it's all I'm happy with it I can then obviously delete that so I'm just also going to make this um, unlisted because I don't want anyone to see it you can put a description again if you want to that's fine you can obviously add those in I'm not going to go through all that now um, you get to select what it is for example so we're just going to leave that as non-profits and activism which is picks up by default um, you're going to get to select your day so this obviously picks up now but obviously i can schedule it for sunday and stuff if i wanted to and it's obviously got the time so i can change that to sunday morning at 10 o'clock um, you can upload custom thumbnails as well so if you've got an image for example you can do by default it will pick up the image and stuff from your youtube channel so it might be your church logo for example but you can upload another one this one here the audience so this is the new thing that youtube has brought in and it talks about whether it's for children or not um, if it is for children, you just have to put age restrictions on. I, by default, I would always just say it's not for kids because it just keeps things simpler. Uh, so, okay, so I'm going to click create stream. So what that's going to do is that's going to give me my test stream here. So I'll click into that. So this is all, all basically now ready to go. So what we, there's two things that we're going to need to do. There's our stream key, which is this one here. And that's what we need to put into our software. Um, and then what I'm going to do is also share here. So up here, this is my share. And what I can do, this is where we can share the video beforehand. So for example, I tend to create our videos maybe on the sort of Friday or Saturday. I can then copy this link and I can then share that onto our church Facebook pages, Twitter, or for example, the email that goes out to everyone. So this will be the link where the video is live. So let me just get a few other things ready on here. Okay, so what I want to do is copy this stream key. Um, by default, I have a stream key anyway. So although I've copied it, I don't need to do that all the time. So once you've done it for the first time, you won't need to do it again. So I've copied my stream key and this stream key is unique. So basically what this is doing is this is a unique set of letters and numbers that is unique to my YouTube account for my church and is talking to the software. And it basically two talk to each other, which then link each other up. So now I'm just going to go back to OBS. And then what I want to do is if I go into settings, for the first time you do it, you'll need to go into settings and set a few things up. Um, so if I just kind of click on, you can leave these as defaults and stuff. 
but this is where I want to kind of change it. So my YouTube, I'm going from, I want to broadcast to YouTube. You can leave those as default. And I want to do is I want to paste my key and stuff in there. And this is my stream key. So this, this is the key that talks from this software and goes across to YouTube. So that's all fine. So I'm going to click OK. Um, and then what we do is we just need to set the camera up. So what I've got, flip backwards. So I've got my video camera I had earlier on. And what I'm now doing is I'm just saved the, the, um, the cable from that on my tripod. The cable's going into that. It's going to my capture card, which is here. So this is the capture card. So I've got the input in here and the output's going to my computer. And then what I want to then do is look at over here. So if I click on camera over here, what I've got uh, with my camera over here, this is the feed and stuff coming in. So this is the studio view. So we've got a couple of different views. So this is my camera. So once you've got your camera, you've got inputs. So I've got my audio input and I've got a camera input and you can select the ones over here. So once I click on select, you can then go through and I want to say it's a video capture device. So I can click on video capture device to pull the data in. But I've already got one in there, so I'm just going to edit that one quickly. So if I go to camera input, and at the moment it should use my FaceTime video on my camera, but I want to go to here. And there we go. So that's all working. So that's now taking a feed from my camcorder and it's going into there and it's going to my computer. So if I hit OK, so that's working fine. We've also got a bit of software as well that we use um, within uh, our church. We use a bit of software called Proclaim. And this allows us to put slides, et cetera, up on the screen or our music, for example. So what I'm gonna do is what we have, it, um, so it allows us to kind of move across. So when I'm broadcasting, so when I'm broadcasting live, I might wanna put, so if we're doing some liturgy, for example, we might have say the Lord's Prayer or, or a Prayer of Humble Access if we're doing communion, for example, I can move those words over and I can load it on the screen I can also then click them and then actually they'll appear. So this is what's going to appear on the, the live stream. And this is what's sort of waiting to got go. So by doing it that you can then have the options and stuff to sort of show what's on the screens as well as what's on the live stream. But if we go through and do a set of live stream up, so that's all working there. So that's all fine. I'm not going to do the audio. So audio depends on the audio settings you've got within your, um, within your church or with your device. You might be using the video camera audio. The capture card I've, I mentioned here does have a, a, an audio input in as well, so you can take an audio in there. Or you might have an AV sound desk that you can actually take an output from the AV sound desk and put it into there as well. So again, that can be sort of set up. So that's all ready to go. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on to start streaming. And then what I need, need to do is go back to our YouTube channel. So at the moment, it says excellent connection. So that's the software coming through from there. And then in second, this should hopefully, he says, hopefully, there we go. So we're getting our preview. So that's my preview. So that's what's going to be appear live. And I click on the big blue button that says go live. So if I click on go live, it will say that I'm live here. So that's working. That's good. And then what I've got here is my test stream. So this is the test stream I said about. And if I click on there, so that's now working. There's about a 20 second delay, but that's now taking a camera feed from there. So if I was to move my camera around, for example, get a nice input into my office. On this one here, we should hopefully see that in a second move around. There we go. So we can now see that one moving around and stuff on the screen. And effectively, that's me broadcasting live. So once obviously the service is finished and I'm happy and everything's all sort of done, I then just need to go stop streaming. So that will cut the stream, etc. And if I click back onto my YouTube channel, this will come up and I can just click end stream. It'll ask me if I'm happy to end and I can click end. And obviously I can just edit the studio, etc. So that's very, if I stop sharing my screen now. Um, So that is a very, very quick um, overview of OBS. And hopefully that's just giving you kind of an insight into kind of taking the software, taking uh, from a basic camcorder um, into a HD capture card, into a free bit of software and broadcasting live. Um, so that's hopefully giving you that sort of um, comfort and stuff that it doesn't have to be particularly difficult. 
Um, if you wanted to go through some more walkthroughs, for example, there is some, some excellent webinars and stuff that National Church have done and National Church actually do a full walkthrough on using OBS. And it has a lot more resonance, a lot more detail. It's a lot slower, a lot quicker, a lot better kind of understanding and stuff because I've given you a very quick overview in the sort of five, 10 minutes of sort of setting it up. Um, that is available. You can watch that and you can obviously um, go back to, to register on some of their webinars and they talk about different, different options of software and different um, materials and stuff that you can use and cameras, et cetera. Uh, that'll be from it from now. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, James. Okay, uh, so next uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, about promotion, promoting our um, live stream or uh, or indeed pre-recorded uh, videos. Um, clearly, um, live streams and video worship provide us with a great opportunity, uh, not only to serve our existing church community. Uh, during times such as these, but to reach out to new people uh, in our local communities. And there have been a lot of stories and a lot of people have told me over the last seven or eight months uh, of people engaging with online church who weren't previously known to us. Um, and well-planned promotion uh, is vital uh, to achieving this extra reach to, to new people. Um, what I'm going to share with you is a communications plan that I, I recently uh, put together um, with uh, with my vicar, um, uh, and it's a it's a rolling communications plan of of, of weekly communications to help uh, promote um, uh, our weekly pre-recorded service, um, and uh, it's it's aspirational. Some of these elements we haven't put in place yet, but this is basically what we are working. Uh, towards doing and if I just talk you through it um, I can then explain what we're trying to achieve with uh, with different ele elements for it so this is for a weekly service uh, that goes out on YouTube and Facebook on a Sunday morning um, pre-records uh, and are then embedded uh, from YouTube onto the church uh, website afterwards so we start our weekly uh, promotion with a Facebook post um, that asks people to contact us if they'd like to be prayed for as part of the prayers uh, in the online service and this is this is a post we hope people may share with their friends to reach out beyond our existing um, uh, audiences uh, and also allows us to engage with people and uh, and build a relationship uh, in a in a in an interactive way so that's the sort of the first uh, piece of content then on friday each week the proper uh, promotion starts with a weekly email um, to the church email list and this uh, this reminds people about the Sunday service um, and what time it will be broadcast and it also gives people a bit of a teaser uh, about what will be covered um, a, a bit of a sort of insight into the theme um, of uh, of the sermon and it, it may even include a clip from the um, service itself um, email is also a great place to ask um, your existing um, worshippers to share the fact that the service will be happening with their friends. So you can put your, your direct asks to people to, to publicise things for you. And using email tools like MailChimp, you can then also share, um, set up buttons that allows and encourages people to promote um, the service on their own social media feeds with um, pre-populated content, uh, etc. So, um, so, uh, so email is a really good way to ask people to promote things on your behalf. Then on the Saturday, um, a teaser, which is sort of social media speak, basically, for, and it kind of says what it, 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 it does on the tin, but it basically is to intrigue people and give them a little bit of an insight into what's, what's going to be there. And it can even be, it could be a little clip from the service, um, but it could be something else. It could be a little bit cryptic. Um, I know someone who who would often put photos up and um, and then sort of uh, say, say something like, "Come and find out why I'll be talking about this old pair of boots on Sunday." And it's just a little, a little, a little thing to intrigue people um, to encourage them to uh, to log on. Then on Sunday itself, there's a sort of straightforward reminder message on social media first thing with links through. Um, uh, to YouTube if you're putting it out on Twitter or to encourage people 
um, to, uh, to, to watch on Facebook if you're using it, doing it as a Facebook premiere. And one of the um, good things about broadcasting on Facebook uh, is that um, the, the service itself then ask, acts as a key um, promotional uh, tool because it pops up in people's news feeds. So you may well end up getting people watching your services simply because they've seen them in um, in your in their news feed when they've been looking through um, and the service has been uh, happening at that point. So that is a real advantage of Facebook. Um, again, if we're thinking about how do we go out beyond our usual followers, our usual audience, um, encouraging sharing is really important. Um, and you might even think about having um, someone who's leading worship in the uh, online service actually putting in a a call to action within that and saying if you think your friends would like this then please please share this video with them um uh, etc if you put that sort of stuff in the face uh, in the post copy on facebook i think facebook now sort of penalizes it uh, and makes it less likely to people in appear in people's news feeds if you're overt about it and say share this and that sort of thing but if you do it within the content of the video um, it won't penalise that. Uh, and indeed, it's more genuine if someone's actually watching and they're enjoying it. Uh, and then um, uh, and then the local vicar says, if you are enjoying this and you think your friends would like it, then please do let them know about it and share this, uh, share this video. Then the weekly cycle finishes with an in case you missed it social media post uh, on the Monday. And this links through then to the church website where the video is hosted. And next to that is a button where people can sign up to an email newsletter, um, to, uh, which will mean they will then get uh, emails uh, prompting them to, um, uh, to watch the service in future and also to help you promote it more widely um, to their own followers. Um, and the rolling uh, cycle starts again. So that is a... I think having a plan like this as well helps you to 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 stick at it. If there's if there are Facebook posts that go out on a fixed day um, every week, um, then you're more likely to stay focused on promotion. Whereas if you if you don't have this kind of plan in place, things often slip and you forget to do the promotion, uh, and they don't work as well. The final thing I'd say then as well is that although this is a sort of rolling digital promotion just for um, this sort of activity. Think about all your other communication opportunities where you can promote um, uh, your online worship, uh, including your offline um, communications, including newsletters uh, and that sort of thing. And also think, are there any specific audiences that you may be able to reach and promote online church to? Uh, how can you reach those audiences and, and how can your, you tailor your messages um, uh, to encourage those people to participate. So that's a little uh, on promotion. Okay, uh, so we're now going to finish the, uh, the, the six top tips uh, and I'm going to hand over to Sarah to say a little bit about legals. Right, um, yeah, as Tom mentioned, I'm going to chat to you a little bit about um, licensing and also um, kind of safeguarding and GDPR kind of aspects to um, live streaming and video. So um, I'm gonna start talking about, starting off with um, CCLI, which um, many of you will know is the Christian Copyright Licensing International. Um, back in March at the start of the pandemic, they introduced an add-on for um, as a streaming license, which is available for any church that holds the usual CCLI copyright license, which the majority of our churches do. Um, this enables churches to broadcast their um, broadcast music and um, lyrics online so people can sing along in church services. Um, the cost of this license um, is done on an electoral roll basis. So the more people you've got on your electoral roll, the higher the price will be. Um, there are a number of different licenses available and depending on the license you have, um, you may be able to access their library of music. Um, as I said, this is gonna be like a whistle stop tour of like licensing. Um, and there's a lot more information on our, ch our online church hub. 
um, but to help churches be able to access rights free music. The Church of England is working with the Paul Scholars of St Martin's in the field to make music available for live streaming Sunday services every week. New hymns are available every Thursday through the A Church Near You resource hub. Um, this means that um, Church of England churches can download music from um, St Martin's Call Scholars rights free um, if you have a CCLI license with the um, streaming add-on. Um, if you haven't got access to it, your Church Near You page, um, please contact um, the communications team after this webinar and we can help you get access to that. Um, next um, slide, please, Tom. Okay, um, this last slide is about safeguarding and GDPR. Um, so as Tom mentioned earlier, um, services online are an exciting opportunity to be able to connect with people, um, especially when we can't worship in our own church buildings. Um, as more of us are now using digital and video communications, it is important that we are aware of the safeguarding implications and gain permission for, from those who are being filmed. Um, there's a range of safeguarding advice in relation to digital communications on our website. The um, advice outlines general safeguarding advice during the pandemic. There's a document about keeping children safe online. And there's advice about video conferencing and using Zoom with youth groups. Um, all that stuff is extremely important and um, I would encourage you to go and have a look at it. Um, but main, uh, one of the main important things to do is for those appearing in the video, and it's also true for photography, um, you need to gain their permission. Permission forms will need to be signed by adults themselves or by a child's uh, parent or guardian. The form must include all the places that the video may be used by your church. For example, this could be the church website or any of the church social media channels, but they all need to be listed. Um, there's a template, um, template form, a consent form on our website that you're able to download. And if there's any people that don't give permission to be filmed, they just can't be filmed. Um, similarly, at the start of this webinar, Tom went through the fact that we are recording this and invited people to get in touch if, they're, if they don't wanna be filmed. So the same kind of thing applies for live streaming services or any recording or photography in church. Um, when we're back into our church buildings, it's a good idea to create a space within your church where people may sit who can't be seen in the video. Um, signs can be used to help people identify where this space is. Um, and at the beginning of the service, if, um, if you could remind people that the service is being recorded and this will give them an opportunity to move if they do not wish to be in the filming. Um, this um, same kind of uh, approach can be used for um, when children are involved in the filming or if you're doing particular filming with a children's group um, a less intrusive way of maybe identifying people that don't want to be filmed could be using paper wristbands um, but if one thing to stress if there's anything you're unsure about to do with safeguarding or GDPR in relation to digital comms then please do get in contact with us and we'll do our best to help. Um, that's it from me. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so uh, th appreciate that was there's a lot of information in all of that. Uh, and uh, um, uh, we'll hear from um, Evie in a second. Um, but I just to sort of conclude, I think it's worth taking us back to something James said earlier on. There's a huge amount of information and we've given you lots of different avenues to explore there and we'll send you information to help you explore them. I think James said as well, one of the best ways to, to learn with this uh, is to have a go. Um, and don't worry about all the different types of equipment and software. You can literally have a go at doing Facebook Live by getting a mobile phone and a, and a 10 pound tripod uh, and practice and have a go and, and see how you get on uh, and don't be intimidated by the high-end high polished videos that you see 
uh, coming from some people. If, if, if you learn the basics that way, you can then decide how you want to take it forward. Um, so there is a huge amount of, uh, of information, but you don't need to sort of digest it all in order to get started. Um, so I would definitely encourage that. And we are now going to hear from uh, Evie, who's going to talk a little bit about how she uh, got started with video um, in her role as Children's and Youth Minister at Mediate Church. So I will stop sharing um, and hand over to Evie. Um, hello, I'm Evie. I'm the Children's Youth Worker. Um, and this, um, we we have a blend in our church. Oh, sorry, I'll get my PowerPoint up. We have a blend in our church. So some things, Sunday mornings, we live stream and um, then we have, I create videos for, oh, is that the right way? Are you seeing? It's in a, it's in a slide, yeah. Yeah, all right, fab. Um, um, and then I create videos for our junior church, which is under 11. So this kind of little PowerPoint is very kids focused, but the principles kind of still work the same. And just to, the reasons why I do it, um, it gives you the flexibility. If you can't make it to your 10.30 service because your kid's just thrown up or, you know, you're having a bad day, but you can, you're not missing the service because it's at your fingertips. You can go in at any time. Um, and uh, we did try kind of Zoom for the junior church, but trying to manage hyper children is really difficult in a room, let alone over Zoom where they just want to tell you about their Lego and you have to kind of manage that. And if the internet fails, it's okay because it's on a video, they can come back to it. Um, and then, so we, I have spread mine out into a very specific structure. Of, I start with a Bible reading, then go to a craft, then go to a prayer, and then go to a dance. This works for me. Obviously, you have to find your own structure. And um, I keep it the same every week just so people know where they are in the service or where they are in um, the video. Like, you know, you, when we are all together for a live church service, there's things that go in a certain way because it just keeps us grounded. I know um, we found in our church that um, the talks, how, how to be engaging with our talks, and that comes in a variety of ways. Um, we do craft on our talks. So um, we will have our Bible reading, and then I'm lucky enough to live with my mum. So we um, digest the Bible reading and maybe unpick it a bit more and pick out the themes while doing a craft, which is a subtle way of getting that message across to young people. Um, we do magic tricks sometimes, as you can see with the bottle of water, that is a full bottle of water, not flowing. I was demonstrating the power of God on that one. And if your church is anything like mine, very competitive, so every week in the live stream on a Sunday morning, we have a text in and that will relate to um, the topic or the sermon or the Bible reading. Um, what's in Timmy's garden was relating to the parable of the sower, I think. And then we have a quiz people can text in and it's about getting that engagement live. Like I think it was, uh, Alan said, had, having your phone with you so you can see those things coming in. And you already do that. like don't stress about going, oh, how's it gonna come across? You know your people and you know what they like. So you can kind of tailor that to, you're not just kind of putting it out into the world, which you are, but you know, oh, Doris might really like this section or I've got loads of kids. So let's make sure we like interact with them with the quiz or the magic trick, whatever it is, you know. Um, we found for our videos, um, just adding a little spice, if you hang out on YouTube at all, you will see these kind of tricks uh, start to appear and some of them are adding um, images to your videos on top of it, layering it up, um, like a little meme, if you can see there, um, me and Anita were discussing the difference between a cow and a pliable horse and how they look similar and just having those visual cues like you would have a PowerPoint or a prop with you for a talk, really useful. Adding an underlying musical theme. I use four different types of music, um, all for free, and you just put the kind of a credit in the bottom of your video, and they subconsciously denote where we are in the service. So we'll have one for the Bible reading, 
will have one for the craft and one for the prayers. And it's either a jolly one, if it's a bit more of an uplifting prayer, or if it's a quiet moment of reflection, um, it's a bit more of a solemn music, but they can really help the tone of your videos. And if you're just witter, or not wittering, if you're talking and it can go on for a bit longer, having a bit of music under it can really lift the video. Also, having a second person in your video or your talk is really great. If you look at the dynamic duos of um, Holly, Will Holly Willoughby and Phil Schofield on Good Morning, if you look at Google Books, the reason those so, are so good is that you've got people working together and interacting together. Um, if you don't have that, have a puppet that's obviously very kind of kid centric, but that kind of bring your cat in if you're the one doing it and you've got a cat, talk to the cat, say, oh, this is my cat, because it breaks you looking at the screen the whole time, which can be a bit intense. So being able to look away and come back is kind of a helpful trick that we've learned. Um, and these kind of our top tips get other people involved. You know, this is your church service. See if people in your church will be involved. You don't just have, when you're doing it on a normal Sunday morning, it's not just one person doing the whole thing. So if you can get someone else to do the readings or the prayers, that's great. Um, Sarah already mentioned about having a set. We, um, and if you, if you move out of your set, just be like, oh, I've gone for a walk today or today I'm in the garden because these people are watching you where you are and when you start moving around, it can be disorientating to watch a video. Um, try new things, that's one. And watch other people. What are other churches doing? I make most of my ideas from watching other churches and seeing what somebody's doing better. How can I always improve my videos? I try and keep them under 20 minutes because I do not want to watch a video that is more than 20 minutes long. Um, and for me, making them for kids, I know they're not going to watch a video for 20 minutes because I'm just not that interesting. Um, our sermons on a Sunday morning for kind of main church have been kind of cut down to 10, 15 minutes for the same reason. It is tiring watching um, online. You know, we've all been in Zoom meetings that have kind of gone on and on and on and we're just so exhausted by the end. So if we can keep to 15, 10, 15 minutes, that... Um, really works for us and we think that's quite useful and save your work there's been so many times over lockdown that I've just deleted my work and had to start again but um so they're kind of that was very quick about what I do and if I could be self-indulgent a little bit I'll show you um a I've made one of my weekly videos into a very quick two minute synopsis your land and worship your God too. Elisha smiled and nodded and God smiled too for with a little girl and a muddy river he had turned an enemy into a friend. <laughs> okay but still I hear you cry but Evie he's just like floating on top of the water. Aha! Uh -huh. We have a plan. We have a plan. What story that Naaman had to wash himself, which means in and out, doesn't it? In, out, in, like out. Like when you're in the shower. So he had to trust in it, and he found God in a really unusual place. Yeah. Call it stepping out in faith. Mm. And sometimes it's scary. Yeah. And you don't know what you ha you're doing. But I'm great inconvenience because he had to go on that long journey. It, yeah. That's a long way. So there we are, there is our trusting Naaman and our healed Naaman. On healed. Healed. Today for our prayers, I thought we could go outside into the world and see where we can find. So there you go, that's just very quick kind of 
bitty of what we do and that's for our um kids really but it works if you want to do it for adults as well the same principles apply and it's you they love you and they want to see you um i think that just to keep that relationship going is so important so even if it is you just with your camera for two minutes you know saying we miss you we love you jesus loves you that's great as well <laughs> Evie, thank you so much. That was brilliant. And I love the videos. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you for that. So what, what we're, what we're going to do now um, is uh, we're going to break out into breakout groups very just for a short period of time, just for uh, 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, just, just have a chat, reflect on what you've heard, reflect on your own experiences, uh, etc. Um, there's lots of questions while you're in the breakout room. I'll try and digest the questions and, and put them into a couple of groups so we can do a quick Q&A when we get back and so we can finish um, at half past. Uh, if there's anything new that comes out of your breakout group, so feel free to put them in the, in the chat when you come back in. But, um, uh, but we will put you into breakout groups now. Okay, uh, welcome back everyone. Um, so I hope you found uh, taking a few minutes to uh, talk to other people uh, useful. And if there are any questions that came out of that, please do um, uh, put them in the chat box. It's not too late to do so. We have them, um, we've collated some of the questions. Um, uh, Alan and James were sort of working through them in the chat as well. So I think some of the, some of the practical ones have been, um, have been dealt with. So. Do take a look in there as well in case um, uh, you want to look at any of those but there are a few uh, which it's probably useful for us just to run through um, first ones uh, about um, about YouTube uh, and I'm gonna point these in um, in James's direction um, the, the can YouTube connect with Facebook um, and how much does it cost to, to, to stream onto YouTube James um, okay, so oh, so I've got Tom as well. Hang on, uh, let me spotlight. Uh, yeah, okay. So the first question: Can YouTube connect with Facebook? Unfortunately, not. They don't talk to one another. Um, they are different bits of software and different companies. So my recommendation would be to broadcast on YouTube. But then what you can then do is take the embed code, uh, or actually just the link, the URL link that I showed you earlier on, and you can share that on your Facebook page. And then what will happen is when you go live, um, that will pop up and obviously the person can just click play and it will be live. And obviously it will also be there as well. So say your service was at 10 o'clock, uh, sort of 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon when someone comes to watch it later on, for example, they can obviously just click play and it will just start again from the beginning, playing it back. So that's the way to do it. Unfortunately, the two don't work together unless you're using a bit of software and stuff um, to, to push out to multiple devices and stuff like that. But my recommendation would be to use YouTube and then obviously just share the link on Facebook and put it in that way. Um, the second question about how much does it cost to stream on YouTube? It's free. Um, so you don't need to pay anything. So that's another uh, advantage and stuff of using something like YouTube. Um, and you don't need a, a Google or YouTube account. Anyone can watch those videos. Um, so sometimes YouTube is are sometimes a better platform to use, for example, rather than Facebook Live. It depends on who you're talking to and, and what your medium for example is. But something like YouTube and then sharing it on Facebook, because if someone... If you share just on Facebook, if the person doesn't have a Facebook account for whatever reason, they don't want to use Facebook, they can't see the video unless uh, watch the whole thing through, unless they obviously have a Facebook account. So that's, I would always recommend you using YouTube and then sharing it on Facebook. But yes, the answer is it's free. Okay, thank you, James. Um, so next question is about the CCLI licenses. So I'm gonna to go to Sarah about this. And the, and the question is about what, what songs can you um, what songs can you use once you purchase the uh, the live streaming license? Sarah. Okay. Um, well, if you go onto the CCLI website, there is an extensive list of the um, kind of the the songs available to be able to stream. Um, the license covers you for performances of this music as opposed to kind of playing the music on a CD or through Spotify. Um, but yeah, there are loads and loads and loads and loads of songs. So go and have a look. 
unmuted, which is a school, you know, naive <laughs> error. Um, we all still do it, however much time we spend on Zoom. Um, okay, uh, I think someone has also um, uh, posted some other links in the chat there. I think probably for other websites where you can uh, you can get music that you can then use um, uh, with um, with the license, which is very very helpful. So thank you very much indeed for that. Um, okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're going back on to the te technical equipment question. So we go to our technical equipment expert again here in James. Um, we've got an, we've got a question about uh, broadband and internet, etc., which is obviously a real challenge for uh, for a lot of churches trying to um, get started with this. Um, about whether in the absence of having broadband, you can use uh, 4G and what other possible um, um, uh, 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 other possible um, uh, options there are. James? Uh, well, I'm not sure about expert, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> um, first of all, yes, you can broadcast for, via 4G. If that's all you've got, you can do it, but it will start to eat up into your data and stuff like that. So it's probably not recommended. Um, but if worst case scenario, um, it does have to happen, then yes, you can use it. And there has been a case where um, I've been doing a live stream and for a, the internet went down and we had to broadcast it via 4G um, and it, it did work, but the quality is not always as good. So my recommendation would always be to use an internet connection, um, whether that's Wi-Fi or whether that's um, via a plugged in ethernet cable, um, whatever you can do, obviously the faster you can get, the better. Um, when you go to put your video up to something like YouTube, if you're using OBS or YouTube Live, what will happen is that if it will, the YouTube is clever enough that it will work out what your upload rate is and actually reduce the quality of the video if it needs it as well. So that's obviously if you if you haven't got the internet connections. If it is really a, a massive problem and you haven't got an internet connection, then don't worry about live streaming. Just use a pre-recorded video because you can do that at home. Um, you, even if you went to your church, you recorded it live and stuff onto your device. Then when I took it back home, edited it in the software, for example, and then uploaded it to YouTube, you can upload it to YouTube and set it to uh, maybe some like a YouTube premiere. So that will build up a bit of suspense and stuff beforehand with a countdown, and then it will go live at, say, whatever time, say 10 o'clock, for example. You can then broadcast it at 10 o'clock. That way it takes out the the issues of you not having a good enough connection. So if that if it is if you are a very rural church and you haven't got a, um, a broadband connection to the church and it, 4G is not really a possibility, which is never great anyway, then I would just say record um, the, the the service and the sermon etc on the camera, and then just take it back and upload it to YouTube and do it that way, and then just go via Premiere. Great, thank you, um, thank you. Uh... James. Um, okay, so just looking at other things, um, uh, things coming in, and people are answering each other's questions here. Um, Paul uh, Paul Fano says, with regard to the licensing for broadcasting pre-recorded music, how does YouTube know that the license is in place? How how can we make sure it's not um, uh, it's not blocked? Um, others may want to come in on this. I've certainly seen churches putting in their CCLI license number into the description underneath um, uh, their videos. Um, I think uh, often with YouTube as well, it will um, be if if you've got music that's being performed in the in the church, so that uh, so it's a choir or music group singing, for example, it often won't block the video anyway. It will it will. It will tell you that um, basically, if if there's any monetization of the video, that it, it you won't um, that you won't be able to make money off it, which obviously churches aren't trying to do anyway. Um, so you often won't end up getting that block. James, um, yep. have, you, have you got? Experience? I was just, oh, well, I was just going to echo that exactly that that it doesn't tend to um, have a problem with live streams as well because it's not quick enough. It tends to be if you've uploaded the video. So if you're uploading a video and you have a, a, a music video, for example, or something you're linking from another YouTube, then that's exactly what that Tim said. What it'll do is it doesn't tend to block you. It might give you kind of a copyright warning, um, but it's what it will do is it will say any monetary, like Tom said, any monetary value that you're you're using, it will go to the, um, to the uh, songwriter um, rather than yourself. But again, that's absolutely fine, but it doesn't tend to block. 
Um, and if it does, if there is a real problem, for example, we had one, uh, we should try to use one in our church and it was a Wren Collective song and they actually did have a block on it. Um, it'll actually just ask you to strip it out. So you can do that via in YouTube or you, you can do like I did and actually take it out and then just upload it again. So that's the other option. But YouTube will always um, alert you to that when you upload it. Right, thank you. And of course, the key thing here as well is if you've got if you've got the CCLI license and and um, uh, you're doing things that are covered by the license, then you've got a leg to stand on if when they start to try and um, uh, cause issues. Okay, let me just check that nothing else has, uh, has come in there. Um, okay, nothing, uh, nothing there. It's not too late. I'll start the sort of the wrap up. Um, so if you're typing a question, carry on. We can come back to it at the end. Um, but in terms of uh, in terms of the wrap up, um, before the end of the week, we'll send an email out to you. There'll be a feedback on form on that, so we'd very much welcome. Um, uh, your feedback on this. This is only the second one of these webinars that we we've, uh, we've run, so we are we are learning as we go along, and we would very much welcome what you know what you found useful, less useful guidance for the future, etc. We'll also include links to the resources, um, and there's been a huge amount of content uh, uh, and information here uh, tonight. And as we said at the beginning, this is very much about pointing you in directions to explore going forward. And we'll also include a link to the uh, recording of this video. So if there are any bits uh, that you wanna watch back through, uh, then you can do so. Um, and we'll also include the sign up link uh, to our next webinar on the 24th of November, at the same time, Tuesday the 24th of November, seven o'clock, which is on social media and analytics. Um, so uh, we would love to see you there. Um, so I want to finish by um, by thanking uh, all our speakers this evening, especially Evie, um, for her um, her brilliant uh, presentation and sharing that with us, which was which was absolutely uh, fantastic. So thank you for that, Evie, uh, and as always to James, Alan, and Sarah as well. Um, and uh, and finally to thank you all for joining us. We do hope you found it useful. Um, and um, I will do a final check that there are no uh, questions that have come in, which I don't seem to be. It's 8.29, so um, uh, I've, oh, I've, we've got a question. Uh, so what app can you use to live stream with a tablet or mobile phone via YouTube from Donna? I think, um, I think you, James, you, I'm going to have a go at this one and then you can correct me, but I, I think you can't uh, unless uh, unless you, if you've got more than a thousand followers on YouTube, you can do that from a mobile device. But you you just need to use the native app, so you just use your YouTube app. James, am I right? Yes. <laughs> you recommended Streamlabs there. I've not I've not seen that, so I don't, I'm not sure what that one is. Um, okay, I might have to have a look. Okay. No, no, I'll, I'll take a look. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, right. Thank you very much, everyone. And please do uh, enjoy the rest of your evenings. Thank you.